Spider-Man has been going through a lot in his current run, Amazing Spider-Man. But while he's been dealing with everything from the death of Miss Marvel to becoming the Green Goblin to fighting against Ben Riley, there has been something brewing in the background. All of the gangs of New York have been gaining power and working against each other until finally a full-blown gang war has broken out. Today here at Comic Story, and we're going to be covering the Spider-Man gang war event in its entirety. That way you're caught up on current Spider-Man comics. This is Comic Story, and I take comic books and I turn them into audio dramas. This is so that you know what to add to your collection and what you should buy at your local comic book store. If you enjoy this type of video, support us by going to our Patreon or our YouTube memberships. But now, let's get into Amazing Spider-Man Gang War. New York is on fire. It's been six hours since the first strikes of the gang war. Now the citizens are trying to get to safety, but it's stopped. Some are conscripted into the armies of the crime lords, and now the ringmaster is using his mind control powers to subjugate them and both his armies. Crime master's aim forces are locked into battle. But the ties are about to turn as aim gyro tanks have arrived. On a rooftop overlooking the battle, Spider-Man turns to his allies. We gotta put this down fast. They've got a lot of firepower down there, he says looking at She-Hulk. Jen, could you? She nods, tearing off her suit jacket. Tank? She asks for leaping down into the fight, her landing scattering a group of AIM soldiers. Give me 30 seconds, Daredevil says as she leaps down before Spidey can say anything. There she goes, Spider-Man whispers with a shake of his head, watching as she leaps in and begins to lash out at the AIM soldiers. Spider-Man, Miles, and Spider-Woman leap down to help, trying to get the civilians out of harm's way as Jen plows through the AIM tank, destroying it. Meanwhile, Daredevil has arrived at the Ringmaster. You have five seconds to stop this, she snaps. The crime lord tries to use his mind control powers on her, but she walks forward. Your mind is undisciplined. A child screaming through a megaphone. I have spent a lifetime training mine. She snaps before knocking him out with one punch. Crime Master continues to keep fighting, but the spiders surround him, knocking him out. And with the fight ending, Spider-Man gets on the radio. Upper East Side is cold, Luke. He reports. At the mayor's mansion, Luke is coordinating the response to the city-wide gang war, giving Spider-Man and his allies several more objectives throughout the city. Hell's Kitchen is no place for amateurs. I'll handle it. Daredevil says before disappearing into the smoke-filled night. I'll head downtown. Diamondback's mine. Jessica Drew says, telling Spidey to call her if he needs her. If Hobgoblin is in Brooklyn, that's where I need to be, Miles says before swinging off into the night. And that leaves Spider-Man and She-Hulk. Where does that leave us, Spidey? She says. Spider-Man looks at her, explaining that they need to head to the monster metropolis and stop the creatures from terrorizing the city. We're fighting monsters? I have a law degree, you know. She reminds him. Do you? I don't think you mentioned that in the last five minutes. Spidey jokes before the pair disappear into the night. Meanwhile, over in Harlem, the White Rabbit is pinned down by Mariah's forces in the warehouse. As the White Rabbit is about to be overrun, the wall explodes inwards, revealing Janice and her friends from the Sinister Six. You must have taken a wrong turn! This is my dad's territory, which means that it's my territory, which means I've got to take you apart. Janice says, and that's when her friends begin to take out Mariah's thugs. Janice flies forward, grabbing her, lifting her high into the air, and she screams in fear as Janice pulls her in close. My father is in the hospital, and I want all of you to know that there won't be an inch to gain from his injuries. Do you understand? She growls. The woman nods, agreeing to tell the other crime lords. No, you'll show them, Janice says before dropping her, letting her fall back to the pavement below, where she breaks both of her legs. Meanwhile, at the Harlem Hospital Center, Robbie Robinson is leaning over his son's hospital bed, asking his son to pull through his injuries, to get better, but a voice calls to him from the shadows. Not the face I was expecting to see when I woke up, Tombstone says as he steps into the room. Finally awake from his injuries, he looks to Randy at the bed. They got your boy too, huh? What about Janice? He asks his old friend, but Robbie is angry with Tombstone, pointing out that it's because of his daughter that Randy is struggling to live. That it was Tombstone and Janice's business that got them all into this mess. That hit on you? That was somebody lighting the fuse. Last night, the bomb went off, Robbie tells him, motioning to the window. Tombstone walks forward, staring in shock at the war zone that the city has become. Damn, the bastards did it, Tombstone whispers, and he looks back at his friend. I need my pants! Meanwhile, at Murray Hill, 
She-Hulk and Spidey have met with the monster forces. Are you behind me? She-Hulk asks, glancing over her shoulder at Spider-Man as the monsters charge at them. No, Spidey says quickly. She-Hulk meets the rushing monsters with a powerful fist. You're clearly behind me! She shouts at him, and Spidey leaps over her shoulder, swinging a piece of rebar. Fine! One unified front coming up! He shouts as they both leap into the fight with the monsters. Meanwhile, in Spanish Harlem, Janice has gathered her forces, explaining that she is preparing to overtake Diamondback and gain control of the rest of Harlem. White Rabbit crunches on her carrot, pointing out that Tombstone and Diamondback have always been allies, even drawing up the territory lines together. Too bad neither of them are here, Janice says. Not quite, Janice, Tombstone says as he limps into the room. Everyone looks in shock at Tombstone's return, and Janice runs over to hug her father. He looks down at the map, asking where they are. Janice quickly fills him in, and Tombstone nods at the territory his daughter has taken from Mariah. You did what you had to do, but that's a big area to defend. We gotta shore up our borders now. Ride this out, he tells her. And Janice turns to him, refusing to stop now and wanting to push through to control all of Harlem. I've been in charge, and I'm in the middle of making plans. I have to finish, she tells him. Tombstone is shocked by his daughter stepping up to him as she pulls on her beetle mask. Glad you're okay, Dad. Just try to stay off your feet, she says as she turns away, motioning to her forces to follow her. White Rabbit hesitates for a moment, looking at Tombstone. Go on. Take care of her, White Rabbit. Tombstone orders. The rabbit nods, rushing out the door. Back at the entrance of the monster metropolis, the fight is now over, and Spider-Man and She-Hulk catch their breath for a moment when Spidey radios to Luke. Murray Hill has neutralized Luke. We're heading to Midtown. You gonna tell him about standing behind me? How about how many monsters we each took down? She says they're nearby. Shh, I'm on the phone, Jen! Spidey hisses at her, and she turns, her eyes widening as someone comes through the smoke at them. Luke, I, I gotta call you back. We got trouble. No, you don't. Tombstone says as he steps out of the smoke, looking around at the destruction of his city. They do. We're going to take down the crime bosses together. In the West Village, the Rose prepares himself, looking to his soldiers, telling them that they're going to take everything from Tombstone in this gang war. Digger informs him that it's his daughter running the territory now, and the Rose nods. That's what makes this perfect. I'm going to lose her first, he says as they walk out. In the meatpacking district, the tracksuit mafia is preparing to attack the inner demons. We're gonna burn this place down with them inside of it, the leader says as the mafia prepares to attack. But Tombstone suddenly appears in the doorway behind them. I'm afraid I can't let you do that. Sorry you got all dressed up. He growls at them, the tracksuits turning on him, readying their weapons. You're far from Harlem, bro! You didn't hear there's a war going on? The leader asks, and Tombstone smiles, motioning over the tracksuit's shoulder. You didn't hear I made a treaty? He asks with a smile. She-Hulk, fastball special, Spider-Man straight into the group, knocking them all out. That move doesn't exactly make you look smart. Tombstone points out as he leaps into the fight. Some of the goons opening fire on She-Hulk, but of course the bullets are just bouncing off. Sorry guys, but we need to wrap this up. She says, tossing a large stack of crates at them. A short time later, those tracksuits are still standing, fleeing from the building, and Spider-Man points out that the inner demons were spooked and they need to hunt them down. No, we're not gonna, Tombstone says, that the inner demons are moving on Lady Yulon's vampires in the East Village, and with them to fight, she'll overrun downtown. We don't have the time to fight every battle, Tombstone growls and She-Hulk shrugs. I guess that makes sense, she tells Spidey, but Tombstone turns to leave, motioning for them to follow. You want to end this fast? You're going to do what I say. This is my world. Meanwhile, downtown, Madame Mask has dragged Hammerhead to her base of operations. He looks up from his bloody place on the floor to find her talking to somebody else. By morning, I'll have half the city. All of it by tomorrow night. She gloats, Hammerhead moving slowly, reaching for his pocket that contains his phone. But Mask's foot suddenly comes down on his head. He glances up to see her glaring down at him, and slowly she nods. Call them. All of them, she says. In Harlem, Janice is standing with her forces, who warn her that Diamondback won't fall without a fight. That's exactly what he's going to get, she says as she pulls on her new costume, informing her crew that she's going at this alone. Show him I mean business, she says, pulling on her new beetle mask, asking the White Rabbit. How do I look? White Rabbit smiles and nods. Like you mean business? She tells her. Meanwhile, Tombstone has brought Spider-Man and She-Hulk to his apartment. He pours She-Hulk a drink. 
Is this the time for drinking? Spider-Man asks. Afraid so. Just got word. Fisk is back in town. And Tombstone explains that Fisk is going to be coming for him. Wait, do you want me to protect you? Your territory? No way. Spidey shouts. But Tombstone sips his drink, explaining that since the others have seen him working with Spider-Man and She-Hulk, no criminal in the city will work with him again. This is my last ride. I want to stop this war before my daughter gets hurt. That means dealing with Fisk, Tombstone says. Downtown, the Magia have arrived. Anyone whose head ain't flat gets a bullet, got it? One of them shouts. But before they can move, the door opens up to reveal Madame Mask. Ah, the Hammerhead crew. Such a long storied Magia tradition, she says, and the crew demands to see the boss, but Mask merely points up. I guess the question is, who is the boss? The crew looks up to see Mask's henchmen have both Nefaria and Silverman's cybernetic head, the two bosses of Magia that she kidnapped earlier. Those men have led the Magia for decades, Mask! You can't do this! The goons shout, but she snaps her fingers and both crime bosses are sent plummeting to the pavement in front of their crews. Nefaria doesn't move, but Silverman's head blinks his eyes. Mask sighs, reaching down for the cybernetic head. You're used to old leaders, and I understand that. You've taken up an oath to bow before them. Follow my orders, no matter what they are. She says that she holds up her head. Silvermane looks at the crew gathered around him. Madame Mask leads the Magia now, he gasps, the crew hesitating for only a second before bowing before their new leader. Over at Sugar Hill, the wall of Diamondback's home explodes inward, revealing the Beetle and her team of supervillains. Tell your men you have a new boss, Beetle says to the goons on the floor. She grabs one by the jacket, lifting him into the air, but he shakes his head. Sorry, I can't do that. He got here first, he says, motioning into the next room. So Beetle storms in to find Rose standing on Diamondback's desk. You're trespassing on my territory, Rose tells her. Back at Tombstone's apartment, the door buzzes. He's here. Tombstone rumbles as he heads to the door. Spider-Man looks to She-Hulk and warns her to be ready for anything that comes to the Rose. But Tombstone opens up the door and Spider-Man's eyes go wide with surprise. It's not the Rose, he whispers. And in the hallway, Wilson Fisk is standing with an army of goons and Typhoid Mary. Hello, dolls, Mary says with a smile. Kingpin and Typhoid Mary and his Hellfire goons stand before Tombstone, Spider-Man, and She-Hulk. Though he isn't happy about it, Spider-Man has no choice but to back Tombstone's play. What can I do for you, Wilson? The mobster says, while Mary is making flirty eyes at both Spider-Man and Seahulk. Fisk explains to Tombstone that his son, the Rose, is making a play for Tombstone's territory. And revenge. Fisk continues to tell him that Rose will be going after Tombstone's daughter. Janice, I'll pick her to win that fight any day. Tombstone growls and Fisk nods in agreement, explaining that he sent the Hellfire goons to back his son for that very reason. I've invested a lot of time and energy into that boy. I can't leave anything to chance. Tombstone narrows his eyes at Kingpin. So you came here to tell me to stay out of it? Gonna have to take a lot more than asking. Tombstone finally tells Fisk to call off his men. Come and make me! Fisk snaps, and the two massive gangsters rush at each other, their bulk sizes locking into battle. Spider-Man leaps into action against the Hellfire goons while She-Hulk charges at Typhoid Mary. Don't you guys mop the floors in the Hellfire Club? Hope you washed your hands, Spider-Man jokes as he flips over the goons' heads. Meanwhile, back at Diamondback's mansion, Janice and her Sinister Six have met with Rose, who has already taken control of the territory. Harlem's mine, Fisk. You want it? You have to go through me, Janice snaps, but Rose nods, explaining that that's the point as he motions to Digger. I'm gonna be able to tell your pops how scared you were when Digger tore you apart, he says, motioning to Digger and ordering him to attack the women. The undead goon rushes forward. Back at Tombstone's apartment, Wilson whirls Tombstone around, sending him crashing into the wall, cracking the wood beneath their assault. But Tombstone grunts, headbutting his enemy. Too close, Fisk! But Kingpin only smiles as blood begins to drip from his face. Your heart's in it. Good! He says as he drives a knee into Tombstone's groin. Nearby, Spider-Man easily beats the goons, though he's getting slowed down by the sheer number of them. Why do I get stuck with the grunts? He jokes. Meanwhile, Mary has drawn her swords and is rushing at She-Hulk, the Gamma monster throwing up an arm to block the blade. First time fighting a Gamma irradiated, Jen begins to state, but stares in shock as the blade slices into her arm, drawing green blood. Mary steps back, smiling as the blood drips down her sword. 
adamantium dipped edges. It was a gift. Pays to have your anniversary on Krakoa. Back at Diamondback's mansion, Digger has launched himself into the group of women. He grabs the ox tentacles and Scorpion's tail. Electro hits him with a jolt, but it has no effect as he twists and whirls the women around into each other, throwing them all to the ground. He grabs a hold of Beetle, tossing her across the room. He then slams into Diamondback's desk, cracking it beneath her body. The Rose looks down at her, drawing a pistol from beneath his jacket. I have a message for your dad. He says as he begins to fire, but the bullets have no effect on Janice's new armor, and she gets up to her feet. You're gonna need more bullets, she growls as she reaches up, grabbing his face, cracking his glasses and cutting them into his skin. Elsewhere in the city, Madame Mask looks down at the map of War Zones, the head of Silvermane sitting in the corner. The old crime boss moves his eyes around the table. Are you using my head as a paperweight? He asks her, and Mask looks at the fights, knowing that Wilson Fisk is backing his son and that there's no way Janice Lincoln can beat him. Fair or not, Rose is going to win. It's going to be the House of Fisk versus the House of Nefaria, Mask says as she turns to walk out of the room. She glances at Count Nefaria as she passes him. Come, father. I may have a use for you yet. Back at the apartment, Fisk and Tombstone are still locked together, pushing each other around the room. Fisk begins to headbutt Tombstone again and again, cracking his teeth. Is that all you've got, Lonnie? Come on! You used to be muscular. Have you gone soft? Do you still have it? He reaches back with his fist, preparing to deliver a killing blow. But Spider-Man is there, webbing up Fisk's hand and pulling it away. That's enough, boy! The grown-ups are talking! Fisk wretches his fist away, swinging Spider-Man into the Hellfire goons that are trying to get back to their feet. Jen tries to help him, but Mary comes up behind her, stabbing the hero in the chest. Jen gasps for a second before whirling and elbowing Mary in the face. You're gonna need more makeup tomorrow, but I'm gonna heal in a few seconds. Jen growls as she knocks Mary away, pulling the sword out of herself. She whirls, charging at Mary as the fight continues. Back over at the mansion, Janice is punching Rose into the ground while her friends continue to fight against Digger. You gotta understand, Fisk! I don't give a crap who your dad is. I'm taking what's mine! Janice shouts as she hits Rose Fisk over and over again. She looks up at the wall as it explodes inward and the Hellfire Shock Troopers rush in while firing their automatic weapons. At the apartment, Wilson and Lonnie are still struggling, but everyone steps up as Fisk's phone begins to ring. Jen looks up from the beating. Is someone getting a call? And Fisk pauses his fight with Lonnie. If you'll excuse me, I have to take this. He gasps through a bruised and bloody face. He taps his ear, putting the call through. Lonnie steps away and the heroes gather themselves. Finally, Kinpin turns back to them. It's over. The fight has ended. Spider-Man, She-Hulk, and Tombstone back away from Fisk, Mary, and their Hellfire goons. Fisk smiles, having just delivered the news that the fight between Janice and Rose is over. What do you mean it's over? Spider-Man snaps, and Fisk just smiles. I saw it. I saw how my son's battle with Beetle would come out. It was the only acceptable conclusion. Tombstone prepares to kill Fisk, but She-Hulk stops him. He's being evasive. Vague. Take it from a lawyer. There's something he's not telling us. Back at Diamondback's mansion, the Hellfire tactical team rushes in, opening fire. Their rounds hit Digger, bringing him down, and with that done, they turn to Rose and pick him up and carry him out. What are you doing? You work for my father! Rose shouts. Yes, we do. You're coming with us, the leader tells them. And as they walk out, the leader hands a phone to Janice, who holds it up, completely confused, hearing the sound of her father on the other end. Dad? I think Rose is off the board. Did you have something to do with this? Janice asks, and Tombstone glances at Fisk. No, honey, but I'm glad you're okay. I gotta go. Fisk takes back the phone, asking if Tombstone is satisfied. And with this done, he turns to leave. Spider-Man is shocked. Wait, you're just going to leave? He asks in surprise, and Fisk nods, explaining that with his wife and sons, he's decided that he will no longer be willing to give up everything to control the city. The Fisks are sitting this one out. He says with a smile, and Spider-Man is still shocked. Why in the name of God didn't you just say that? He motions to the carnage around them, but Fisk looks to Mary, admitting that they have been arguing a lot lately, and the fight was a good way to release his stress. Fisk and his men then turn to walk out the door, but before he leaves, he looks over his shoulder, giving Tombstone one last piece of advice. I've always respected you, Lonnie. If you respect me, listen to what I'm about to say. This was not an attack on New York City. This was an attack on the Magia. Madame Mask has claimed their power, all of it. Be careful. 
Alone, the trio then look at each other, and finally Spider-Man speaks. I thought Madame Mask was dead. Back at the mansion, Janice and her crew are picking themselves up, but most are pretty busted up from their fight with Digger. We're gonna have to lick our wounds, Electro says, but Janice shakes her head, pointing out that while they now have control of Harlem and everything in the North, it won't be long before Madame Mask comes for them. We're gonna need everything we got, White Rabbit says, and suddenly Digger begins to cough, and they all turn with shock as he sits up. Where's the boss? He snaps as he looks around in surprise. Janice looking at him for a moment. He left. Abandoned you, really. So, like, you need a job? Meanwhile, downtown, Madame Mask is getting ready, allowing the treatment to her face to settle before pulling back on her golden mask. Shotgun comes in, informing her of Janice's victory over Rose. For a brief moment, Shotgun begins to come out of his spell, remembering that he was sent by S.H.I.E.L.D. to kill Madame Mask. My... You never stop fighting, do you? What a strong mind you have, she says. But she repeats the magic word that puts him back under her control and checks the glyph on his upper arm. Don't you see why they won't beat me? I've walked in the worlds of technology and magic, and I have mastered them both. The Lincoln Girl team will learn the same thing that you've learned when you came to end me. The only enemies I leave breathing are those who serve my purpose. A short time later, Janice and her crew return to their base in Harlem to find Madame Mask standing before Janice's map. I like your maps. Very optimistic, Madame Mask says as she turns to the new crime boss. Janet regards her for a moment before asking the others to leave. Harlem belongs to me, she says when the two are alone. I'd say that's very much up for debate right now, Mask says from behind the golden mask. She looks to Janice, informing her that no matter what she has claimed in this war, Mask will take it back. No matter how badly you want to keep your father's territory, I want it more, Mask says, and Janice shakes her head. I'm going to do whatever it takes to finish this. Whatever I have to be. I'm taking this all the way. The two women regard each other with a moment of silence. Central Park. Dawn, Mask finally says, and Janice nods. Bring everything you've got. Elsewhere, the sun rises over the city as Tombstone stands with Spider-Man and She-Hulk, angry with himself for not ending this war before Janice got into trouble. You worry she's about to lose to Madame Mask? Spidey asks, but Tombstone shakes his head. Maybe I'm worried about what happens if she wins. But Spider-Man promises to make sure that nobody wins. Spidey and She-Hulk then leap off the building. These gangs didn't make war on each other. They made war in my city. And I don't care how many people they've got. They're about to have a very bad day. Back in Central Park, the two rival armies are ready. Madame Mask's men are armed with advanced technology, while Janice and her crew have super criminals. Both are ready. It's game time, Janice hisses as the battle begins. In Central Park, Madame Mask stands at the head of her army of AIM soldiers, her team supernaturally controlling criminals at her back. Beetle stands across from her, her army of gang members and her own Sinister Six at her back. All right, Beetle, this is the part where I give you one last chance. Madame Mask shouts, ordering the young woman to give up her territory and come to work for Mask, offering to pay her. But Janice shakes her head. Sorry, Mask. We're starter villains. We don't have a lot of overhead. Pass. Janice shouts, and Mask nods, speaking the magical word to get her army to attack. Malaki Tai, she shouts. The armies rushing at each other, with Digger rushing forward, grabbing a hold of Count Neferi and Silvermane, slamming them both into the ground. Beetle leaps over the battling armies, heading straight for Mask. You started this! Don't be shy! Janice shouts, but Mask slams her new tech gauntlets together, hitting Janice with a blast of energy that throws her across the field. The Beetle hits the ground, not moving for a moment. Mask stalks forward, her army of AIM soldiers behind her. You're welcome to keep screaming, Janice. Get your people's attention. I want them to see this, she says, but suddenly the AIM soldiers are confused. Someone is pushing in the back. Mask turns in surprise. Oh, drat, she whispers as She-Hulk suddenly comes barreling through with her army, tossing AIM soldiers everywhere. What do we miss? She calls out. And over everyone's head, the two Spider-Men, Spider-Woman, and Daredevil come leaping in, everyone having concluded their own adventures. This is war! Hit him fast! Take masks, people, first! Spider-Man shouts to his team. Spider-Woman and Daredevil break away, making straight for Count Neferi and Silvermane, while Miles moves to fight with Rabble. Living Tombstone goes to fight Agent Walker, the man who tried to kill him. Nobody's gonna keep me off of you! Tombstone growls at him. 
Meanwhile, Spidey leaps over everyone, heading straight for Mask. Anger in his voice. My city is on fire because of a war you started! I could lose my friend! Spidey shouts as he leaps, avoiding her energy blasts. He fires a web, ripping the gauntlets from her arms. I won't let you profit from this. I'm taking everything from you! He shouts at her, but across the battlefield, the heroes are fighting against each villain, with Tombstone beating Jensen down, knocking the glasses from his face, throwing him down, ignoring the rounds from Jensen's shotgun. Nobody gets more than one shot at me and you had yours! Tombstone growls as he stands over the agent, but Jensen looks confused as he realizes who's standing over him. Wait, you're Tombstone! How did I get here? Jensen whispers, and Tombstone realizes that he smeared the strange sigil on Jensen's shoulder, which freed him from Madame Mask's control. I was working with an agency to assassinate gang lords in New York, and Mask got to me first. Jensen explains to Tombstone as he grabs him, lifting him up. Don't blame this on some magic tattoo. The reason doesn't matter. You were sent to kill me. Tombstone growls as he prepares to continue the beating. But Jensen shakes his head, explaining that the higher-ups weren't concerned with Tombstone, since he mellowed out in his old age. We were much more worried about what was becoming of your daughter. Tombstone growls with rage, punching the man hard in the face, knocking him out. He then turns to the battle, searching for his daughter. But Janice has pulled her forces back, wanting to let the heroes thin out Mask's forces. You sure you want us holding back? The crew your dad brought can't do this alone. Some of them might not make it. White Rabbit points out, but Janish shrugs. Less to worry about once this is over. Nearby, Spidey is still fighting. Mask trying to slow him with Owl, who flies over the battlefield. But Spidey drops him in one punch. Mask glares at him. Fine! You want to see my power? She powers up her remaining gauntlet. On my position! Bring everyone! She commands. The entirety of Mask's armies suddenly turn, rushing at Spider-Man. Janice turning to her force, ordering them to rush into the battlefield. But then she holds back, watching. Holding back? Your people are out there fighting for you. Tombstone growls as he comes up next to his daughter, who looks at him in surprise. I don't need you to tell me how to play this. I'm going to have one chance to take Mask out, and I'm taking every advantage that I can. Janice tells him, anger in her voice. Tombstone sighs, apologizing to his daughter, admitting that he was worried about what she saw in him. He didn't see what she was becoming. There's a little girl who cared about what you wanted her to be. She's long gone, Dad. There's nothing you can do now. Janice tells her father, turning to join the battle, but she stops short. She looks back in surprise at her father, holding her beetle wings. I'm sorry, Janice. Tombstone rumbles as he yanks the wings off of her armor. Whoever wins today is going to own everything, and they're going to have to be a monster to keep it. That's not you, Janice. Tombstone tells her, yanking her back, punching her in the back of the head, dropping his own daughter to the ground. Sadly, he looks down upon his offspring at what she's become. It's me. The war in Central Park continues, with Spider-Man fighting against Madame Mask while the rest of the heroes fight alongside Beetle's army against AIM. But the tide suddenly turns as Electro whirls, blasting She-Hulk. Hey, watch it! We're on the same side! She-Hulk snaps at her, but Electro shakes her head and She-Hulk realizes that the other villains have now turned against the heroes. Sorry, She-Hulk. This has been fun, but our order's changed. White Rabbit turns and fires with her SMG, wondering why her crew has turned on the heroes. But she is startled when Tombstone grabs her by the arm and begins to pull her out of the battle. We help Superman win and we're all gonna lose. We're pulling out. I gave the word. Tombstone growls. But White Rabbit looks at him in shock. Janice good with this? And Tombstone glares at her. Are you having trouble hearing? I gave the word. The rest of the heroes are stunned as Tombstone's forces turn on them, throwing them to the ground in a moment of confusion. As Spider-Man is trying to dodge a parting blast from Electro, he's distracted long enough for Silvermane to hit him with an energy blast that brings him to the ground. Spider-Man struggles to get to his feet, his back smoking from the wound. Harlem has betrayed you, Spider-Man! And that frees up some hands. Madame Mask gloats as her AIM soldiers begin to surround the heroes, now on their own. Daredevil looks at Spider-Woman. Perhaps there is a betrayal that we should have seen coming. Electra whispers to Jessica. As Spider-Man gets up, Count Nefaria steps forward, hitting him with another blast, bringing him to his knees. The rest of the heroes getting up, launching into battle against the AIM forces. Daredevil and Spider-Woman leaping in, lashing at the soldiers. Stay close! Fight as one! Daredevil shouts. She-Hulk tries to knock AIM away, but their sheer numbers bring her down. 
They've got She-Hulk! We're in trouble! Miles shouts, but things aren't looking good. But that's the moment Luke Cage suddenly arrives, slamming into a large group of AIM forces, bringing them down. Someone's in trouble, playboy! But it's not you. Luke yells, the other heroes leaping into the fray. Jackpot firing off her lucky blast, while Spider-Boy leaps in over everyone's head, knocking AIM soldiers out one by one. So these guys all work for Madame Mask. It's okay if we hit them, right? Bailey asks. MJ nods her head as she lets off another blast as Jackpot. But while the heroes are regrouping, Spider-Man is being torn apart on the ground by Silvermane. Careful, Silvermane. His death belongs to our master. Nefaria warns. Suddenly, there's a gunshot from the tree line. And both Nefaria and Silvermane are hit in the chest, destroying the sigil that Madame Mask is using to control them. Gotcha. Shotgun whispers from the tree line before turning and leaving Mask alone. The two gangsters look down in shock, unaware where they are or what they've been doing. My daughter, she enslaved us. Nefaria realizes, and Silvermane nods. And for that, we will take everything from her. The first being her kill. He says, looking down at the smoking Spider-Man. Are you talking about me? Yeah, you're talking about me, aren't you? He groans as he tries to stand, but Spider-Man isn't alone. She-Hulk and Jackpot slam into the gangsters, knocking them away. But the battle still isn't over. Mask steps through the smoke, preparing to destroy Spider-Man. Come on, Mask. It's over. Spider-Man tries to get out, but Mask begins to power up her final energy gauntlet. I have controlled every criminal on the island. Now, there will be chaos. Every New Yorker will pay. Mask snaps, but now Spider-Man is angry, shouting at Mask about the destruction that her war has caused. As the heroes continue to battle around them, Spider-Man shoots out a web, wrapping it around the gauntlet. Mask tries to open fire, but the weapon explodes in her hand, sending her to the ground in a smoking heap. Realizing they've lost, Rabble leaps into the air, fleeing from her fight with Miles and Bailey. Looks like I've been in the wrong house, Spider-Man! We'll finish this later! Rabble shouts at Miles as she suddenly disappears with a cloak. Sick cloaking tech, Rabble! Bailey calls out to her. Don't compliment the villains, Bailey! Miles sighs. The battle is over. The Spider-Man returns to his friends, dragging a mask with him. It's over. We did it. Yeah, all of us! Danny Rand says as he and Shang-Chi walk up, bruised and battered. Where were you guys? Spider-Man asks in surprise. Where were we? Danny asks angrily, but Shang-Chi puts a hand on Danny's shoulder. Danny, relax. The two walk away with Danny grumbling about how they had to take out an entire battalion of AIM tanks all by themselves, but Spider-Man gives them no credit. As the heroes gather and compliment each other on a good job, Spider-Man joins Luke. How are you, Luke? I know helping me was technically illegal. I hope you don't get yourself in trouble. But Luke smiles, shaking his head. Actually, I've got some good news on that front. Fisk's law has officially been repealed. A little bit later, with this great news under his belt, Peter sits at Randy's bedside, explaining that the law has been repealed and the city is grateful for the hero's help in stopping the war. As he finishes his story, he tells Randy that it all started because the young man was trying to do the right thing. Peter closes his eyes in sadness, but Randy finally opens his. Okay, I'm sorry. I can't do this anymore. He whispers, smiling as he reveals that he's been awake for a little while. The two talk for a moment before Randy finally asks what happened to Janice after the battle. And Peter shakes his head. I don't know, Randy. No one does. Back at his safe house, Tombstone looks to White Rabbit, who asks what happened to Janice. I told you, we had a disagreement. She left. Tombstone rumbles, leaning back in his chair, informing White Rabbit that the city is now theirs. Since all the other gangsters have been taken out of the war, Rabbit nods and points out that no one will be happy that Tombstone worked with Spider-Man against him. It's gonna be trouble, she tells him, and Tombstone nods, standing, pulling on his jacket. The city would have burned if I hadn't turned to him, but the cards were on the table. He was the only one I trusted. So what are we going to do now? Rabbit asks, and Tombstone smiles at her. I'm gonna beat him to death with my bare hands, loud and in broad daylight, where everyone can see. No one's going to remember me teaming up with Spider-Man at all after that. He turns to leave. Come on, we got a city to run. I hope you guys enjoyed this. There's quite a few crossover books that have happened with this event, telling you what happened to Daredevil slash Elektra, what happened to Spider-Woman, and what happened to Miles. The only major one that we've covered is the Miles story, and that is already up on the channel, so I'll link that down below. It's how Rabble got involved and Prowler got involved. I hope you guys enjoy that. 
But let me know what you guys think of the story down below. I know we did a big beefy one for this, and that's basically because you guys weren't interested until the story started. So I figured I'll just do the whole thing in one sitting. So thank you guys, and I will talk to you soon.